We have on several occasions over this past year talked about burnout and the symptoms, circumstances, and realities that come with it, because it's what a lot of us have started to face. And while I don't think that a lack of motivation and burnout are the same thing, chances are you've encountered one or the other. And it kind of makes sense, right? Because if you were sitting in a fancy restaurant pre-COVID, and when you checked your bank account, it said $380,000, I know, it's super relatable. You probably have no problem ordering anything that you'd like from the menu, picking up the tab for the table next to you, and leaving a super generous tip. But if your bank account said $38, suddenly you're going to start figuring out what the cheapest thing you can get is, and if you should even stay there at all. Both burnout and motivation come from the balance of input as it respects your output. There are certain things that you need as fuel creatively, and really only you know what those things are. Some amount of socializing, new experiences, maybe travel, certain activities, and above all, in whatever form it takes, capital R, rest. They all contribute to your input. The ideas that you have, the work that you make, and the motivation that you feel are all your output. And I think it's worth restating that ideas are output, something that you put together, not input that just comes to you. Last year, at the start of all of this, I predicted that if you hadn't burnt out, you were about to. And yes, most artists are introverted, and the idea of suddenly having no choice but to stay home and work on your creative pursuits was absolutely an attractive one. And even later into the year, there was the odd comment here or there of folks on that video going, Nah, this is utopian and the pandemic has only made me more powerful. But the resounding consensus, more or less, was that this was happening. There's actually been a few people coming back, maybe 10 months after initially seeing the video and going, Oh yeah, that's, that's me. I bring this up not to grandstand that my prediction was correct, but to show that burnout isn't a rare condition or accidental fault of your own. It is on almost all paths and inevitability under the right circumstances. See, back at that restaurant where you have either $38 or $380,000, a few feet away in the kitchen, the chef is panicking. Their delivery of fresh quality foods just flipped over on the highway, and now they have to settle for frozen, inferior, mealy ingredients. Now, that chef might have an ingenious maneuver that night, and by pulling themselves up by their bootstraps, whip together the finest meal you've ever seen out of middling ingredients, and just kind of pull it off. There's adrenaline, something to prove, and an obstacle that can be overcome that all motivate them to do so. But say that for a month or two straight, the truck keeps flipping over, or the owner says that those bad ingredients are all that you can afford, and it's all you're going to be able to afford and there's no end in sight. That chef will very well at some point go, you know what, if we serve fast food quality food here now because that's all that's coming in, we're just officially a Wendy's now. So current global event that we're hopefully starting to see the end in sight of or not, there's really two big problems here affecting burnout and motivation. It's the budget and the trajectory, the input not matching the output and the goal or end in sight. A small budget isn't a problem when your expenses are low and a big budget isn't a problem if it's sincerely affordable. So I think this is where a lot of the folks who still a year later are feeling really great about their creative output are. I'm going to venture to say that their budget is really small. Maybe they're a hobbyist or they only make something new every once in a while. Maybe they're an essential worker who, despite a much more stressful existence, is going through a lot of the same motions and somewhat therapeutically can use that to fuel their art in their downtime. Absolutely nothing wrong with either of those things, but the majority of creative professionals that I know who have to output consistently are hurting or have been through a period of hurting at least some point in the last little while. It's led a lot of us to take stock both of what fueled us to make our best work before and how to adjust to balance the budget now. For instance, I know that for me, I've observed that it takes me a lot longer to accomplish things that used to take a lot less time. It's also worth interjecting here to note that it is not just a lack of traveling and doing cafe sketches or 
hanging out with friends indoors that's led a lot of us to a creative deficit. Like we talked about in the Anytime You're Struggling video, there is so much added stress and anxiety that our circumstances have put us under that it makes it really difficult to even focus, let alone be creative at our max capacity. Balancing your input and output right now might mean being more proactive about getting the nourishment that you used to get without thinking about it. Actively trying to be more active, take that daily walk to stave off an evergreen's worth of mental health baggage, but it also might mean making the tough decisions on lowering your expenses, the things that you output. So if you thought of creative expenditures as having a monetary value, drawing practice $20, commissions for clients $40, daily updated epic webcomic $380,000, plein air painting $25, please help me budget better, my creative motivation is dying. If you are committed to a daily updating page of webcomic, first of all, what stream guarded by an ancient porcupine did you drink out of? But also, if keeping up with this commitment is painful, can you readjust so that it is more sustainable? If commissions are your main source of income, but you find yourself overworked, can you increase your rate to reflect the new value or cost of your time? That's worth doing almost always. Or like in my case, if generating whole cloth original ideas is your typical bread and butter, but it's gotten really hard to do that, can you revisit some older ideas and spruce them up a little bit better? That was my situation for the better part of last year, and through some readjustment and being more purposeful with how I come up with new things, I've slowly been able to get some of that power back to maybe half-mast. No matter what, bulldozing through at the same speed you've always gone at isn't going to last forever, and it may cause you to burn out worse and for longer. So that's budget, and hopefully it makes sense enough so that you can examine your specific circumstances and see what needs adjustment. But that other element, the one of trajectory, ends up being really important without us realizing it. The question of where is all of this going? On a day-to-day -day basis, living out the same experience over and over without any real variety has worn on a lot of folks. And knowing that there's a light at the end of the tunnel or some kind of finish line ahead can make or break our motivation. I work hard all day. I like knowing that there's going to be a break. On the same point, doing the same work or kind of work without really understanding why, or having an overall goal with it, quickly turns what could be enjoyable into a chore. If you're making something to post to social media on a schedule, simply for the goal of getting more followers or whatever reason without something more specific in mind, you can definitely start to wonder, why am I doing this? Especially if that nebulous goal is harder than you thought to reach. Even something like have five solid portfolio pieces, finish the first draft of that story, make 100 characters in a series, or finish animating your short film, all have end goals that you can high five yourself over later. Another big point to remember with trajectory is that we are not static one-dimensional people for years and years at a time. And every once in a while, a lack of motivation might mean it's a good time to take a step back and reassess what direction you're going in. Maybe 10 years ago you were dead set on being a comic artist, but something about effects animation just rings a lot truer for you. It'd be kind of a disservice to yourself not to at least explore some ways to readjust your course towards effects animation. In that case, I'm not saying everyone needs to be an effects artist. There's also points that we might reach where we've finally said all we want to say with a certain medium or realm of work. I can't speak to everyone's experience, but we are in a situation where a lot of people's experiences have sort of synced up. And if there's any kind of help or relief that this video can provide, then I'm happy. Speaking of making changes, this will be my last video in this space. The home that we've filmed in for the last five years, the landlord is selling the place and kicking us out, which is super fun during the pandemic. Thank you. Thank you. It's very fun. I will see you soon, though, in the new office. My course, Learn Character Design, is available over at learncharacterdesign.com. Over 18 hours of drawing and character design curriculum. You can get Biko's backpack over on Patreon at patreon.com slash bageldenison. Bagel Denizen on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok. You can follow along. Thanks so much for watching, and have fun creating. I'll, uh, I'll do this. <laughs>